Hello YouTube, this is a follow-up to my uh, NetGate SG4861U uh, PFSense EMMC failure. That would be this chip here. This chip failed on the board. This is a storage device, kind of like a hard drive. Um, uh, so anyway, when I was talking to sales, I guess sales was talking to support and what they had, I was trying to see if I could get a replacement board. Now, you can buy this board. Uh, it's $470 for just this board from ADI. And the memory, uh, you know, the storage chip went bad. So um, support suggested uh, to sales that you can uh, you can purchase one of these. This is a uh, sorry. This is an MSATA. Um, you can put this MSATA card. You can uh, rearrange the boot order, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Uh, so put this lower in the boot order and this higher in the boot order, and you can bypass. Um, this device here. Um, there's another problem with this um, system as well. So there's, you know, there's a, a known issue with it. It has something to do with the capacitor. Uh, so basically, if you power it off and power it back on, uh, there's a capacitor that charges somewhere. And then like if you if you power it off and try to power it right back on, uh, nine times out of 10, it won't just power back on. You have to wait for, and I don't know which capacitor it is, but you have to wait for the capacitor to lose its charge before it will turn on. And like in my experience, 10 to 15 minutes. So this is kind of, you know, for a business, I wouldn't say this is, you know, what you really would want to use, uh, given the fact that, I mean, it has these problems. It's, um, you know, maybe if we were to design the board, you can see this is for um, a SIM card for a phone. So if you put a cellular modem in here, uh, kind of modular. Um, I think this probably ought to be a modular device if, you know, they're going to go bad and, and solid state memory doesn't have an infinite life, uh, lifespan. So knowing that fact that the board should last a long time, but uh, this is not going to. For a long term, I would suggest that it ought to be removable or, or just go with a solution like this initially and, and just and just bypass that. So anyway, so the, t the two issue is I've got a bad chip here. Um, and I had to replace it with this one, and um, and then it won't always reboot. So I'm going to take you over to the screen here and just uh, show you a few things. Um, support will not uh, replace this under warranty under any circumstance. Um, so we're going to have to go with a different solution. And again, you can, my thought here is, is I think PFSense is awesome. I think it's a fantastic software. Um, now, but the question is, what do I think of NetGate? I'm not really sure. I'm not convinced. You know, um, they no longer make uh, this version. Um, so, but uh, the newer ones have the same issue where they have the um, storage mounted on uh, on the system board. You know, maybe it's just like, oh, okay, when it goes bad, just forget it. I don't know. I don't really like that, though. So, anyways, I just did a uh, refresh here. And so, this is the default settings. But I'm actually going to go through a reboot and show you how to change the boot sequence. So this is the newest operating system running on um, running on the MSATA. Sorry, it's crooked. I don't know if I can straighten it out or not. Okay, let's go ahead and reboot, and it's pretty self-explanatory. I've got a um, just got a micro or mini USB plugged into the USB port, and then I'm using Putty. Uh, interesting thing is, is it's powered over USB, so even if there's no power onto the motherboard, uh, the USB powers it, uh, powers the serial connection, so it comes up. Uh, so when you power the device off or you unplug the power, the COM port connection stays up. Um, in this case, I'm using PuTTY. I'm connected to COM17, uh, which you can find in the device manager after you plug in. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go through a reboot. This is number five. Uh, yes. Okay, it's rebooting, and when it shuts down and comes back up, uh, you just hit F12, and I'll show you how to go and change the boot order. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay, so it'll tell you here right away what to do. Just hit F12. Hit F12 for boot menu. So this is kind of where you can just select which you want to boot, uh, what you want to uh, boot to. 
So um, top uh, it, the top drive is my MSATA, um, and then the second one is the uh, fail drive. Um, so, but I'm going to hit option seven here, and now it's not always option seven, depending on how many boot drives these numbers will change. So I'll just go ahead and hit uh, seven for payload, which also says setup. So uh, the, this is kind of pretty basic, so I'm not going to change the sequence here. But whatever uh, letter you pick, like if you pick a lowercase m, uh, that will go from here and it'll go up to the top of the list and push everything down one. Uh, so I've got M SATA and then all these M SATAs and then USB 1 and USB 2 and then uh, the EMMC, which is the vice has failed, so I got it down here. Um, so then after you go through the process and you get these in the sequence that you want, then you just hit capital uh, E to exit with save and then that will change your boot sequence. Um, I'm going to hit uh, X and then I'll show you a few more things and we'll conclude the video. Okay, and as we watch it boot, I'm going to show you how I reloaded the operating system. Uh, I just down, we went to, you know, uh, PFSense and I downloaded the, the OS. Um, and uh, it's this file right here. Uh, the PFSense, this is the 243. It's an ALI or eight, I'm sorry, ADI version. So back to here, this is, you know, this is the ADI motherboard. So when you download uh, your PFSense first, if you're using a NetGate device, ADI, the people that made the bo uh, board, uh, you download the ADI version. Uh, it took me a little while to figure that one out, uh, but that's a good piece of information. You know, uh, you probably don't want to try to load the X64 or X32 version on here. Um, so I didn't know that I had to be told that. Uh, so anyway, the process, uh, you download, this is the, the ADI version and I have this little bitty, this is a micro SD card. And it's kind of cool. I'm sorry, it's not in focus here. It's kind of cool where the micro SD card just fits in there. I mean, you could use anything, but this is just what happened I do, I did. And so I use this application called Etcher. Um, and there's a free download and you can select your image. And then I don't have the drive plugged in, but you could select the drive and then you say flash and it'll go through the process of flashing it. Um, so rebuilt it, wrote it to the um, MSATA and we should be able to log in now. It says it's not secure. Do you want to continue? Yeah, you'll pre proceed. And this is kind of the wizard setup here, there. And you can bypass that by just clicking any of these options here. Like if you want to go to the, uh, the dashboard, for example, then you can just kind of skip the wizard. Okay, guys, that will conclude this video. Thank you very much for watching. I certainly would appreciate it if uh, NetGate would have replaced the board but they didn't. Uh, and like I said, we'll be working on another solution. Thanks for watching.